Hi guys, uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, my name is Victoria DL and I'm part of Tonic Studios Design Team here in the UK. And today I would like to share with you all these gorgeous goodies. Now this is called Santa's Workshop and it's your next colour trend of the year from Tonic Studios. So we're going to get straight to it and show you all the things that are going to be available in this second trend of the year and then we'll pause and we'll come back and we'll make a couple of cards so let's get to it okay so Ooh, where do we start right we're going to start here i guess here we have the nouveau diamond uh, ink pads and you'll notice a little bit of difference with this set we have a white pigment um fast drying ink so we've been after a white pigment or a white ink pad for some time and tonic have delivered so this is going to be fantastic or you'd like chalkboard finishes um i think you're going to have some real fun with this we've then also got in the same set the glacier cherry and that's your hybrid that you're all used to and then you've got your shamrock green there and that is also a hybrid um, and obviously with your hybrid you don't have to think oh what does this go with this it goes with anything so that's that's your ink set there so we also have crackle mousse oh i absolutely love this stuff uh, put through your stencils it's amazing you get it all crackle and this is called rose hip and it's the most gorgeous i've not actually opened inside it but it is the most gorgeous color really is beautiful vibrant there so to go with that we do have yay don't you just love the dream drops these are my favorite and this one is called Rudolph Snows and quite apt for Santa's workshop collection. And this is a beautiful shimmery red. And if I just, I've not got a piece of paper to hand, so I'll just put a blob on the top of my hand there. Can you see the shimmer in that drop there? I hope that picks it up. So that is your dream drop. So we'll put that to one side. I should get a piece of paper really, shouldn't I? And then I can show you um, the colour. So bear with. Um, in the craft room and she's saying I haven't got any card. <laughs> oh dear. Right. Let's just fold this piece of card over. Right. So we shall put some on here for you to see on the white instead of on the back of my hand. So again, remember with your drops, don't actually touch the nib to the card. Just drop that drop onto the card and you'll get a beautifully formed um, pearl drop. So as we can see there, I hope that picks it up there. It's a beautiful, beautiful shimmery. Right, so we'll go on to the next drops. We'll do the drops then. So here we have the Crystal Drops Gloss. And this is called Sprig of Mistletoe. And this is your gloss drop. So again, we're going to put that onto the paper. And I always lift off in a, in a circular motion. It's funny how we all... We all work, but as you can see, the nib never touches the card. So there you've got that gorgeous green. It's like um, it's like an apple green. It's beautiful. So we've got another drop here, and this is your glitter drops, and this one's called Grotto Green, and you can see all the glitter in that. Just look at that sparkle. So we'll put this one down. Obviously these form just the same, you just drop them, don't touch the, the card, just let the drop form and these will dry like a little bit gritty because obviously you've got the glitter in there. 
So you've got that gorgeous, and that is like a holly green to me. So that's beautiful. What was that called again? Grotto green. Beautiful. And then we have the jewel drops. And as you can see, they're like iridescent, they're translucent, I should say. And this one's called holly berries. So they're quite see-through, but this one dries beautiful. Oh, got a bit of air in there. Top tip, always do one drop on a scrap before you, you use them and then you'll not have any splatters. But that is a, an absolutely gorgeous colour. And as you can see there, and that will dry darker. So I'll show you these drops a little bit later on and then you can see the colour that they actually dry. So I'll just put that to one side. We've also got here the Nouveau Glitter Marker and that's called Iced Ivy. Now what you will do with your glitter marker pens, once you take it out of the packaging, and many of you already know this, but people that have just never bought these products before might not know. When you take it out, you'll have a white nib. And all you will do is you'll press down and let that ink drop down into the nib and just pump it up and down a few times until you see that colour coming through and it's already coming there see the green so we just it's nearly there there we go see and then that's your Gorgeous, gorgeous green, iced ivy. And that's a gorgeous glittery pen there. So that's another nice one. Then we have the Nouveau and we've got that beautiful sparkle spray. And in here it's called Frosted Bow. And that really is. So you'll hear a little ball bearing in here and just shake it until you've got a mix. And then I'm just going to spray this off screen into my bin because obviously I don't want to cover anything. But as you will see, look at that. That is a beautiful rich colour. And I'm spraying, I normally cover my desk, you see, so nothing, I have like a little spray booth. So as you can see, that is... Oh, that's going to dry beautiful. Really, really nice. So we'll have a look at how that all dries later on. So what else have we got in the mix? We have an embossing powder here. And this is called Pine Needles. And it's the most beautiful green. There we go. Can you see that there? So we've got an embossing powder. We've also got another embossing powder and this is one of your sparkly glittery embossing powders. And this one's called Sugared Strawberries. And you see all the sparkle in there. It's like ruby slippers. So that's another beautiful powder there. We also have, yay, Glacier Paste. Love this stuff. So this is called Crushed Cranberry and it's absolutely gorgeous. I wonder if I could open that so that you can see. Not ideal to open it with a pen, Vicky. But let's see if we can pull that back so that you can see. Just look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Beautiful, beautiful colour. Really rich. Can't wait to have a play with that. I'm a, I love the, um, the pastes, really do, I'm covered in it now. That's what you do for putting your nails in it, Vicky. Never mind, let's crack on. So now we've got the embellishment mousse. And this is a stunning colour, absolutely beautiful. Myrtle green, I mean, just look at that. It's got such a shimmer in there. And that's just your normal embellishment mousse there. So it'd be fantastic through your stencils or turned into a paint. 
Don't forget you can paint with the, the mousse. You add a little bit of water from your spritz bottle and mix it with a little brush and um, then you can use it and paint with it, colour in your images or whatever you want to do with it. So we've also got Santa's workshop and we've got a collection here, contains four bottles of glitter sequins and confetti. You've got silver snowflakes, you've got a beautiful Christmas magic red glitter, you've also got that gorgeous falling snow. I've just used that a lot recently and it's beautiful, really, really gorgeous for Christmas cards. And then you've got those gorgeous candy cane sequins. Now you remember those from the kit? Because you had a little taster of um, this next trend in your in your Christmas tag kit. Um, so we've got another one of those, which I'm glad because I didn't want to part with them. So we've got that one there. And then we've got Santa's Workshop. And I've got one open here that I can show you. So in here you're going to get it's the six by six and they're pattern paper stubble sides so you get eight designs six of each and they're 160 gsm and they're acid and lignum free okay so there's one design there which is like your candy cane stripey and then the other side you've got some beautiful stars then we've got a green and white snowflake design and on the back of there we have a polka dot. Then we have the white and red stripe and on the back of there we have the Christmas trees and then we have a green and white polka dot and on the reverse there we have this dot and dash in the red and the green design. So that is your Santa's workshop. And then we get to the papers and you remember we had these in that kit when you had a little taster. So you've got the Shining Spruce handcrafted cotton papers. Um, and obviously you buy the packs, you're going to get five sheets in each pack. It's 150 GSM and it's lignin free. So that's a speciality paper. Beautiful. And then this, this is a firm favourite with me, the Foiled Craft Card Candy Stripe. It's a white craft card with the red foiling on it there. It's A4, it's 280 GSM. You also get five sheets in the pack and it's also acid and lignin free. It's, uh, back, it's white on the reverse as well, so you could actually have this as a card base if you wanted to. I think it's actually strong enough for that because it's 280 GSM. And if you score it on a scoreboard, you will get a beautiful finish. It does not crack as long as you score it on a scoreboard. Don't just fold it over and then hope for the best. Put it in a scoreboard and score it and you'll get a beautiful finish. Here we have Santa's hat. And this is a speciality card. It's also an A4 and it's embossed. It contains five sheets. It's 230 GSM and it's also acid free. And it has like a glaciery type pattern in there. It's, it's just absolutely stunning. It really is. And that is also white on the reverse. We also have this and this card is beautiful as it is but it's also beautiful if you ink on it as well or you can spritz and spray on it and it's a speciality card it's called ice rink it's a4 embossed card and it has that lovely texture real weave in there and it's pearl it's a pearly card it's 230 gsm and it's also acid free and then last but not least we have the classic Craft Perfect Pine Tree in Green. It's A4, 216 GSM. There's 10 sheets in a pack. It has that weave texture in there that you're all familiar with. And it's acid and lignin free. So you've got a slight smooth to the back and then you've got the texture to the front there. So... I, I absolutely adore all these colours. I love Christmas and my favourite colours are red and green. 
uh, when I got married my wedding dress had a lot of bottle green on it it sounds quite revolting but it truly was lovely um, so I I love those colours and my house is full of red I absolutely adore red I think it's a warm and inviting colour and these are just obviously perfect for Christmas so we're going to pause and we're going to come back and we're going to put some things together so join me shortly Hiya, so we're now back and um, I've had time to have a little play um, I want to show you what the uh, Nouveau drops look like now they are dry and as you can see they're a beautiful cherry in colour and then you've got the, the glitter drops there that have dried darker then you've got that lovely green um, it was called the sprig of mistletoe and uh, it's like an apple green and then you've got the dream drops there which were called Rudolph's nose so you know they dry and there's a shimmer to them that's what the um, glitter spray um, dried like that was the frosted bow so you can see there you can see all the glitter and that in there um, so that's what they look like dry so I'll put those to one side now I've had a little play with the embellishment mousse and we use this gorgeous uh, myrtle green and this is what it looks like once it's been put through a stencil <coughs> excuse me um, so you can see the beautiful pearl and uh, shimmer in there um, so that's the, the actual colour um, and I'll show you in here now what I would always recommend with the uh, embellishment mousse always leave the foil attached and it will help keep the moisture in um, so that's the colour there um, of the actual mousse itself so that just helps keep the moisture inside and then make sure that it's sealed tightly okay so that's that one um, We've also then had a play with the, um, oh dear, I've lost my words, the glacier paste. I wanted to say glitter paste and I knew I didn't want to say glitter paste. Glacier paste, there we go. And that has that lovely sparkle in there. So that's just been put through one of our stencils. And this is what it looks like inside the jar. Now I've removed the foil because I didn't need to keep the foil on this on the top of this jar but you can see how rich and creamy that is inside. It's absolutely beautiful. So that is what it looks like when it's dry. I've also had uh, a wee play with the glitter spray and um, this is that frosted bow. Um, so this was put through the same stencil so that you can see how that looks and then we turned the stencil onto a piece of waste card and this is the waste and I absolutely adore that pattern um, it's one of our um, stencils and um, you can see just look at all that glimmer and glitter and oh it's just it really is lovely I just hope the camera can pick that up but it is beautiful so that's what that looks like dried so I'll put those to one side I just wanted you to see the colour uh, it's hard to show you on camera uh, I understand that so we've put a couple of cards together here to share with you so we've created this card here and it's a tent fold of the um, spine across the top and we've just put a piece of card here on the background not to the full length of the card just to three quarters of the way across and then we've used the crackle paste through one of our stencils as you'll see it's a familiar stencil there and then we've wrapped a piece of vellum around there just so that you can still see all that lovely um, crackle paste coming through um, you're not covering the whole design up but it just adds a little bit more texture to the card and a bit more interest 
We've then um, used one of our scallop circle layering die sets and one of our circle layering sets and we've used that gorgeous red, beautiful red card there. So we've used Santa's hat, um, the same card as we've used in the background here. And then we've used that absolutely stunning green. I absolutely love the pine tree green. It's a firm favourite with me. And it matches these beautiful drops. Um, the sprig of mistletoe perfectly. Uh, and this is what I love about Tonic. They always try and match everything. So your card matches your drops, etc. And the mousse matches the drops. Um, and then we've just used one of our script um, sentiment dies there dear Santa and we've just trimmed it off and then we've added those lovely green drops there to the card so that's one card that we've created the next card is a very familiar card it seems to be on trend at the moment um, we have phases of different cards uh, being popular and this one seems to be doing the rounds at the moment so um, this is like a are based on like an arrow card that we've had previously um, very simple card to make it is just a six by six card and you find your centre point here at three bear in mind you can do this with any square card it doesn't have to be six by six you could do it with an eight by eight or a seven by seven or five by five it's up to you but this is a six by six and we found the centre point here at three and we've cut from three right to this point here and then we've gone from three to the top point here. And the pieces that come out here at the sides, these are the pieces that you use to cross over the front. And then you just do mat and layers going down in size. We have also used um, a rosette from the loaded pockets and we've used that gorgeous Santa's hat again. And it creases beautifully, it doesn't crack at all. So just make sure when you use these cardstocks like the the craft card with that beautiful red foiling, it creases beautifully as long as you use a scoreboard. And then we've used a scallop circle here just in white card and we've heat embossed the Merry Christmas with one of our old Merry Christmas stamps. And we have used this gorgeous uh, sugared strawberry glitter embossing powder. So uh, that really does have a shimmery wow factor to it and then of course we've used these beautiful these are one of my favorites the candy cane sequins i just think they're beautiful and it just balances off the stripes in the background where we have used that craft card now you could put message in here if you wanted to or underneath it's completely up to you and then the card stands on the front there and looks beautiful on the mantelpiece so that was the second card we made and we're going to make one of those in the video so for anybody that's not made one before we also made this just for a bit of fun and this actually um i found this one some time ago on pinterest and i've wanted to make it for ages and it's just been sat there on the back burner i think a lot of these cards they go round and we all have a go um but this is called an envelope gatefold card. Uh, I've no idea where it originated from, so I apologise to anybody um, that brought this card out to begin with. Um, but basically it's made from a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. And I'll show you the template. So basically you're just going to start off with a square piece of 12 by 12 cardstock. And you're going to score at three and nine. Then you're going to rotate your piece of cardstock. And again, you're going to score at three and nine. And then with a pencil, you're going to score at your top edge. Because bear in mind, imagine this being a 12 by 12 sheet of card. You're going to mark it with a pencil at six, top and bottom. And then all you're going to do, you can imagine the card here. You're going to score from the, th the six inch mark up to what would be your nine inch score line. And then you're going to cut that piece off. Then you're going to go from the six 
to where you put your three inch score line and you're going to trim that off and then you're going to rotate it and do the same so then when you burnish it with a bone folder um, your panels are going to come in your two doors and then that will fold up and that will fold down all I would suggest is make sure that you maybe trim just a slither off the top here because otherwise it catches a little bit on this top panel and the idea is that once you have added a magnet or um, a velcro fastener or something like that these two stay stuck together and it sits on your mantelpiece then like that okay so I'll show you the decorated one and then if this is something that you'd like to make um, then that is how you do it um, so let's just put that to one side like I say that's from a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock and um, this is the finished card now I've actually covered the back there as well and you could put a message on there if you wished um, and then here we have a magnet see how it just clasps and we open that then because it's lined on the inside and then as you open these doors you've got a nice little message there and again we have stamped that with the uh, pigment white ink and we've stamped it about three times and um, so if you've got a stamping platform that will be your best friend um, because you can keep that piece of cardstock positioned in one static place and I basically just stamped re-inked and stamped again re-inked and stamped again and then I've heat set it with a heat gun because with it being a pigment ink pad you will need to dry that so uh, have your heat gun ready to to give that a little dry so basically if you were going to put this on the mantelpiece now you would fold that one in bring that one down to hold it in place and then it sits on your mantelpiece like so so you know i think it's a lovely card um whoever invented it i take my hat off to you because i fell in love with it so that's that one there okay so uh let me see i've written the measurements down in case you want to make this so you're going to start off like i said before with a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock you're going to score it at three and six and then you're going to rotate it you're going to score at three and six at three and nine i should say you score it at three and nine, rotate it three and nine, and then you're going to mark it top and bottom at six. And then you're going to cut from that centre six there, right down to each point line of your score line each side. And you're going to do that top and bottom. Um, what else do you need to know about that one? Uh, you layer inside, so that red la layer inside there is five and three quarters square. And you want two of those if you want to line the back. Uh, and then the layer for the doors is five and three quarters by two and three quarters. So that's for those and you'll need uh, four of those all together to line the inside and the outside. And then for the triangular pieces, you'll want... Um, two squares uh, measuring three and three quarters um, for these pieces and then you want to cut them on a diagonal line so you get your triangles then to line the inside and the outside you're going to need two magnets because you're going to want to put a magnet here at the bottom and then you'll be putting a magnet on the underside of your um, topper now this could be a circle topper an oval hexagon it's really up to you what shape um top you want to put in the center but just make sure that you put a magnet under here and then one under here so that it's got something to click to okay so that's that card explained so if you get stuck or you need any help just give me a, a shout and um we'll we'll get that done so now we're going to put a card together and we've got some pieces cut out and I will explain what I've done. So many of you might have already made this card already because it has been out for some time. 
um, but I know there's a lot of people wanting to make it and have nowhere, no idea where to start. So to begin with, you're going to need a six by six card blank, okay? And you're gonna find the center mark here at three. And then you're going to trim the card from the three all the way up to the top here of where your card folds. So you're just this side of that fold. So if I get a ruler and just roughly mark out where you want to, or even I'm doing it wrong now, blimey. That's a good thing, isn't it? I've made that many cards today, my head's fuzzy. Right, <laughs> let me get a rubber. Promise to God. It's been like um been like a conveyor belt in here today. It really had well it's been in, like a conveyor belt in here for a long time, but oof. Right, so ignore that. <laughs> and then let me draw around here and then you'll you'll be able to follow that I'm sure so what you want to do is where you have marked it at three you want to trim off this piece here and this piece here now you could do that in a paper trimmer you could do it with a craft knife you could do what I've just done there and do it with a ruler and then cut with your scissors it's completely up to you but We'll just do it with our scissors because we've actually drawn that line. There we go. And you're left then with this piece. Now you're going to need these pieces that you've trimmed off. And remember that they came from that direction. Okay, so we'll put those to one side. We then want um, two layers exactly the same. Um, so these are three and three quarters square. Okay. And let me just check that. That's not three and three quarters square. That's not three and three quarters square. That's five and three quarters square. We're doing well, aren't we? We're doing really well here. So, <laughs> so should we start again? <laughs> so we want a piece of card here, which measures five and three quarters square. And we want two. Okay. If you weren't confused before, you are now. Okay. And obviously this one is going to go inside your card and it's going to line it. The other one, you'll see we've marked at the centre here and we've marked off at two and seven eighths. So whatever your piece of card measures, whether you're making a seven by seven or an eight by eight square or even a five by five square or a four by four square, um, find your centre point at the bottom and then you're going to trim straight up from there up to this top corner straight up to there up to that top corner there okay so i'll do that now and then we'll jump ahead and we'll make the one we've got prepped so this is just to give you a rough idea of what you will be doing so that would then cover the center of your triangle and these will fit then in the outer parts of the triangle now if you want more of a border just trim this next layer down a bit more it's completely up to you I then find the center bottom point and a side point and then that's where that will lay okay so then we get the next one Again, we put that down there. Again, if you want more of a white border, trim the red layer a bit shorter. And then that one will lay there. 
and again you're going to find that line and you'll see there that that's where it should lay more or less the same each side and if you do it with wet glue you've got that maneuverability to just tweak it and know where you want it to sit now if you wanted an extra layer on the top then obviously you'll need a smaller square and this is five and a half square and then you want to find the centre point two and three quarters and then you want to measure that up to the corner there and again up here I mean I would recommend doing this on your paper trimmer I'm just doing this just for speed really and then you want to make sure that this is smaller now if, if you want more of a border take that square down an extra little bit you know it's completely up to you um but there you have an extra layer there and maybe you could have it so that you've got white arrows or then put the extra layer on there and then you know your red white and it's up to you but that's how you make that card um so we're going to put this one together now because we've done them in, obviously in our Santa's workshop colours. So I'm just going to unclog my glue and I'm going to put the green layer down like so. I absolutely adore this green card, it's just beautiful. Not just for Christmas, just for any time of the year. It's a beautiful colour. Right. So then we've got this next layer down here. So that's going to go on there. So. Wet adhesive again. And bring that down towards me. Over a wee bit. There we go. And I'm just going to put my heat gun on before I forget. Um, is that enough glue? I think I've got enough glue in there. Let's switch it on and. Uh, Oh, we've got enough glue. So then we've got that next layer there. And of course, this is from the Santa's Workshop paper pad. So we're just going to put some glue. Now, obviously, you're just tickling the card with a little glue. You don't want too much glue on the paper as it will buckle. And then that's going to go down there. Now... You know, before we did the pattern in the background and this time we're doing the pattern in the foreground. It's up to you. So we're going to put that there and then we're going to decorate these two side pieces. So again, all glued flat. And then layer down there. I do like card shapes, I must admit I'm a sucker for doing a card shape. I think fancy folds never seem to date, do they? We all like to learn a new fold or something. And like I say, this one's been around for some time but it's it's doing the rounds at the moment. And I think some cards we've learned years ago end up coming back in fashion and we do them all again. So, and if, you, if you're a crafter that's been crafting a long time like me, then you remember some of these things first time round. There we go. And again, wet adhesive on the back. one in place 
like I say, if you want more of a border, then obviously change the the sizes of your squares. So now you're gonna sit and my heat gun's ready, so we'll do we'll jump ahead and do that actually whilst that's that's on, otherwise we'll be melting god knows what. Right, so this was one of our rosettes from the Loaded Pocket launch. And I'm just going to add some hot glue there. To the centre. Try not to burn my hands in the process, as I always seem to do. And then just hold that until you know the, the glue has grabbed. But like I said, this cardstock it creases beautifully, doesn't crack at all, and I'll show you in a minute when we turn it over. So that hasn't set yet, but I'm going to be cheeky. Ooh, she says. I'm going to be cheeky. And just hold that there. Stay there, pretty please. And then a bit more hot glue. There we go, switch that off. And then put this top one on. You're not going to see this anyway because of the sentiment, but um, it holds it all together. I just want to show you that this card does not crease at all. Just hold that a little bit longer. There we go. I've got a habit of putting a glue gun on and then forgetting I've left it on. Mind you, these days they automatically switch off after a while, which is good for someone like me that's a bit ditzy and leaves it on. There we go. I think it's grabbed now. That bottom one's not grabbed. It's not my night, is it? I don't think it's my night tonight. Completely missed it. I'll tell you what, we've run out of glue. We've run out of glue, so I'm going to stick my old faithful on. Because I can't remember where I've put my glue. Glue sticks for that one. There we go. Let that one heat up a minute. Oh dear, this is the start of a good video, that, isn't it? Glue guns run out, give you the wrong measurements. Oh, I don't know what else is going to happen by the time we get to this end of this video. That might have held it, actually. Oh dear, dear, dear. I think I actually see my little glue sticks now after all that. I think I've got them down here. Now, ah, there we go. There we go. We might as well stick with this one as it's warm. There we go. You never have too many glue sticks on the go. Right. Just so that it's in one piece on the card. I'm a bit of a stickler. Anyone that knows me knows I'm a bit of a... I'm not going to say I'm a perfectionist, but I'm a bit of a stickler. Right. So. Let's just stick that there. So I know it's glued. <laughs> Oh dear dear, there we go. Well, I'm just like all of you, I'm only human. <laughs> oh dear dear, right there we go. So, you can see there, there are no cracks in that card whatsoever. It's, uh, it's folded and creased beautifully. So, I've gone ahead and I have stamped this sentiment. And I used the Nouveau Clearmark 
uh, embossing pad with my uh, platform and I used a Merry Christmas stamp that we had ooh, many, many years ago now. Uh, if anybody remembers the Festive Friends, that's where the sentiment has come from. And I've used uh, anti-static powder onto a circular die cut to get rid of any grease marks um, and basically just covered it like that with the anti-static powder to get rid of any grease marks and it smells lovely as well and then I have inked up my stamp onto here and then I have used this beautiful sugared strawberry uh, glitter embossing powder and then I've heat set it with my heat gun and then this is the beautiful finish that you get really sparkly so I am actually going to glue two of these together just to make them a little bit more rigid for when they're on my card so I'm going to put that down there just gives it a little bit more oomph and that is going to go in the centre of the rosette there. So, for these, you want to find the position of where you want them to be. So, just fiff and faff until you're happy with where they are. Now, I don't want them to come off the card, so this one does need to come down. So I want to make sure that that point is to the bottom and this point is to the edge. I also want to do the same on the other side. So that looks about right to me, more or less. So then what I will do is I would lift one off and I would put a little bit wet adhesive there. I would bring this one back into play and then roughly know where it was I was going around about there and then press that to that one okay this is how I found it is the easiest way to do it and then you've got two then stuck together so then you can draw a line so that you know where you have to put um, your foam pads um, to go onto there. So I'm just going to get some foam pads and cut them up. So I want a finer one for the tip. And then I want one there, and I think that will do. Yeah, I think that will do. Let me just see there. Yeah, that will do me, I think. So just to be sure, if you're a bit worried about it drying too quick, put a little bit of wet adhesive on your foam pad and that will then give you that little bit of wiggle room and it helps you then find where you want that to go. And I think roughly you want it there. And then we're going to put a foam pad on the back of the rosette. And then we're going to put a little bit of wet adhesive in the centre of the sentiment. And we're going to place that into the centre of the rosette. Just let that grab for a minute. If you wanted a slightly bigger rosette, then that would be absolutely fine. 
as you can see on this other one here we had a rosette with the point and this was the waist so you get two rosettes out of um, the two strips you join together and then take that off there again put a little bit of wet adhesive on the top of the foam pad and then I want to place it about about there I'd say just so we can still see these top points here and then to finish I want to add um, some nouveau drops so let me get the air out of there and I want to put a nouveau drop on every other so remember tiny little drops lift 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 you just tickle in the card Round we go. Got a bit of a wobble there. Round we go. I mean, I think these would be pretty, pretty easy to batch make for Christmas. And they're a bit different for the uh, person that receives them. They won't have seen anything like that on the high street, will they? And then if you want to, you can add some gems or, you know, some of your, um, your sequins. Um, but I think, I don't know, let's have a look. Although I can't seem to resist these um, sequins at the moment but with that paper being quite busy I'm going to leave I'm going to leave them I am going to leave them less is more sometimes isn't it less is more um I'm looking at it now thinking does it need something else no I think I'm going to leave that at that so you've got two there so whether it works better for you with the um, pattern in the background and a plain front or a pattern front and a plain background, it's completely up to you. Um, and then we have this um, envelope gatefold and then we have this card where we've put a vellum wrap around the card. And make sure that you can actually see those in shot. So if we bring those down a little bit, there, you just about see those. There we go. So there's two cards, very similar, but in a different, different paper and different style. And then two other projects that are a bit different. So there's plenty here to get you going. I mean, these would see you to make a considerable amount of Christmas cards if you bought this bundle of um, Santa's workshop because you've got that paper pad with all those papers in and you're not using many papers to use as decoration in cards like this either. Um, so I just want to say thank you for joining me today. I'm glad nothing else has gone wrong in the video. <laughs> um, but if uh, any of this interests you, um, the Santa's workshop collection, um, the latest trend then I will have my links in the description and that will take you straight to the Tonic Studios website um, but I'd just like to say thanks very much for your company today um, I really appreciate you coming and visiting my channel and subscribing and uh, following me on my journey so um, I'd just like to say thanks very much and I will see you all soon take care guys bye now.